Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Project Ozone. So, I know this episode, I was originally intending on this episode coming out yesterday, right? And, uh, there was actually an update for the pack, so I did update the pack, it, um, fixed a few things in HQM, and updated mods, and stuff like that. So I went ahead and grabbed that, and normally I do like a backup of some sort before I update. Well, it looked like a small update, so I wasn't too concerned. And after I updated, it actually destroyed my inventory. So my bags, I did, uh, I did uh, creative mode cheating a few things that I didn't really want to have to craft again because you know it was a bug and everything. Um, so I did get our Zavicio armor back, and our bobbles actually did not get deleted. That was the only thing that did not get deleted. And then um, also got back our red heart canisters and our space exploration stuff. Um, our unbreakable wand, Sardis Quartz wrench, a couple bags of holding, um, our ender pouch, a few things like that. I know there's still a ton of stuff that was in those bags that got lost, but most of that stuff, I mean, I'm not that worried about it. I did lose my sword, which is kind of a concern, but uh, I don't foresee us needing it this episode, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, and I've got to figure out, I know we had that unbreakable, like, infinity blade that made it pretty much infinite durability. Um, so I've got to I've got to sort that stuff out and all that. Um, also, let's see. After the update, um, I had to remove this crafty crate because it was causing tick errors. Um, so I did remove that really quick, and I did a little bit of cleanup around the base. I got rid of I think all the logistics pipes. They seem to all be gone. I also pulled out these uh, these alloy smelters that were here that were used for smelting. We're not going to be using those. Um, and I built a small addition. It's not finished, um, and I haven't actually started putting in any of the lasers and stuff like that in there, but I did build a small addition to our moon base that we're going to hopefully get into today. Um, we shall see. Now, as for the mechanism stuff, I actually got to looking, and I can't, at the moment, I can't craft those things without getting into some new stuff, and I don't want to do that without you guys, but it's like the uh, the chemical injection chamber, which would be the next thing that we needed. It takes the purification chamber, enrichment chamber, all that's fine, but then we need the advanced circuits, which require the item fabricator, um, you know, and getting into all this stuff uh, from Quantum Flux, so... And if I recall, the item fabricator, I think we have the stuff to actually make that now, but, um, the iron casings, electrosilicon, uh, it was the PRCs, wasn't it, that took mercury. Okay. I knew it was, like, something around in here that was the reason that we didn't get into it before. Um, also, I did automate a few things. Um, basically all this stuff, just little odds and ends and things that we use, conduits, capacitors, um, all that stuff, machine chassis. Um, also, pretty much everything's in here now, once we get the smelting up and going, that we can automate deep storage units. So, because really, deep storage units are just vacuum chests, machine chassis, plastic. Uh, they're not really very expensive in the least. So, anyways, um, oh, and I did expand on the fluid storage. I did test it. The fluid storage stuff will not work on a super soaring setup, so that's fine. Um, so we've just got fluid storage buses along through here. Um, so all those are plugged in. I haven't got these plugged in yet, which is fine. I've got to do another controller and P2P and all that mess. Um, but none of the fluids over on that end are actually stuff that we necessarily need plugged up right this second. Um, also, um, I did add another, uh, two more CPUs up there and also automated all the buses, um, and pistons and interfaces, all that stuff. Pretty much all the, for the most part, all the AE2 stuff is automated, except for a few things like cloud, I mean, uh, controllers and little things like that. Um, so anyways, today, the first thing I want to do is I want to work on some auto-processing, right? Um, and then, after that, I would like to actually get into the Quantum Link stuff, because it's not terribly expensive within this pack. Um, requiring energy cells and stuff. I mean, none of that stuff's that bad. So I would like to get into Quantum Link, hopefully, and... I, oh, you know what I didn't look at, though? I did not look at the singularities. And I think those are pretty standard to craft, it looks like, so... Um, there's still not too much of an issue then. But we do need to actually get that set up and going. 
So let's do that real quick. I don't know if there's a quest related to that, to, you know, getting into singularities. Also, we did unlock the Project E um, quest line here, but to make this, um, I haven't looked through all this stuff. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, honestly, but um, one thing that we are going to have to do is we're going to have to still go a little bit farther into space to get our dire crafting table. Because this requires uh, crystal matrix ingots. Those aren't expensive. Double compressed, that's not expensive. Controller. But we do need awakened cores. Um, nether star, awakened draconium. Wyvern cores. It's the draconic cores, I think. Yeah, that require the blue gems, which that is Neptune. So we are still a little bit away from from getting those. Um, but probably in the fairly near future, we will push through the rest of space to get uh, to get our blue gems done but there's some things i want to get done before we get into that so anyways um the first thing that i want to get into today is getting singularities crafted and to do that we need i can never remember the name of this uh this thing oh what's it called it's like the matter something matter condenser that's what it is okay that is not expensive is there a quest that relates to that that's what i opened this up to look to see about I actually do not see anything in here for the matter condenser. So we'll just craft it, um, which realistically, if I had to make another one, um, it's not really a problem. So there's our matter condenser. And then we're also going to want a 64K uh, storage component. And honestly, I guess, where do we want to plug this up at? Honestly, I'm tempted to put it like right here. If I'm being perfectly honest. And then we would have this. Because I'm not really using this for cobblestone purposes. I've got enough cobblestone. Um, eventually I may move it into space. Because we'll want a few singularities, right? But um, as it stands right now, we can just push that cobblestone into this. And we are going to condense into singularities. And then I just need the 64K... Um, storage components and then eventually if I find that I want it to be faster or something like that you know I can always do that but you'll notice it's building up but we need 256,000 um, items for it to actually create the first singularity which really that's not going to take that long it's about what 10, th 10 seconds or so to get a thousand um, and if I wanted to I could take it up to the uh, the space station, and it would create singularities, like, probably about 30 seconds per singularity or something like that. Because it's up there on the space station, it's generating just a ton of cobblestone with all those, uh, all those things set up. So anyways, that's crafting. So once we get ready for quantum um, link chambers, then we're, we should be good. We'll probably have a singularity uh, for that. So next up, what I want to do is I want to get into some auto-processing, right? Um, starting with basic things like the sag meals, the alloy smelters, the furnaces, stuff like that. I want to get that stuff set up this episode. Um, plates, pretty much this room. And I tell you what, I'm actually going to remove all of this stuff. All these late... I'm going to wait. I don't want to jump the gun on that and remove them and actually need it. So we'll leave that alone for right this second. Let's go ahead and get ourselves just some interfaces order like 10 more of those and I think we're going to use this ultimate furnace here for magical crops for all of our all of our smelting needs because it I mean it smelts near instantaneous right honestly I may end up automating the creation of these because I think eventually I'll probably want more of them I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the furnace like right here and then I'll probably just do azure blocks below it because I want it to be like it's setting on something so maybe like two furnaces here two furnaces right here Four of these ultimate furnaces should be enough to, you know, I mean, because it's like, <clears throat> it smells a stack of stuff in like two seconds, so I really don't think we need just a massive number of these. And then, there's a couple ways I could do this, and I think what I'm going to do is, let me get a basic item filter, item conduits, and let's see, I've got coal on me, should be good. Okay, but we'll just bring our dense cable line back, because um, I'm going to need it over here as well anyway, so it's not 
not really out of, out of the way for me at all. What am I stuck? Oh, okay. Okay, but we'll just bring it through to about right here, and then we'll change it over to, you know, just standard smart cable. We've got ME conduit we could make, which would be good. Let me go ahead and get that stuff automated so that we can uh, easily make ME conduit. And there's dense ME conduit as well. Honestly, it would be cheaper to make just the dense conduit through that, but... So now we'll just grab ourselves a little bit of this ME conduit real quick, and that way I can basically cross over um, conduit lines. That's the main reason that I want this. So we'll just plug it in right there. You can see it's zero out of eight channels being used. Okay, and I think we're going to use black cables. I did end up moving my cloud seed stuff up here, just because I've got the water set up right here. So I figured it would be easier... Um, basically it creates cloud seed, it goes into here, and creates concentrated cloud seed. It is, it's semi-automated. I still have to put in, um, items into it. I haven't fully automated it yet. I will say that I did look for cloud seed cows between episodes, but I did not find any, um, you know, flying around and stuff, so they may not spawn. Um, but I am going to try a couple of things before I just totally give up on those, so... But anyways, let's get, where's my, uh, there it is, Smart Cable Fluix. Go ahead and grab that. Save those settings. Oh yeah, I'm going to need food, right? I'm going to need just a little bit of food. Honestly, these eight carrot carrots, they last forever. <laughs> you will have food for a very long time if you have carrot carrots. Okay, i tell you what, we're going to have the dense black line come out right here yeah that'll be good and the p2p I can't plug it up right there plug it up right there and can I do out of curiosity can I do this I cannot do that okay I was I was thinking that that wouldn't work I was thinking that wouldn't connect but I wasn't for sure these aren't, these aren't like a replacement for the uh, standard ME cables, but they are nice to have for certain situations. So we'll just have the smart cable then come up like that. And then we'll load our settings, and that should be all set. It's going to take a second. Right now, device is missing a channel. There we go. Device is online. Okay, so now what I want to do is let's do... The dense black will bring it out over to here. We're going to have our smart cable come up like that. Um, and basically what we need to do is we need to output items from the, the sides, right? We need to input items on the bottom and on the top. The bottom being just coal. So I could do like an interface here. And I tell you what, do I want to do mini coal? I think I do. Let me just teach it a quick recipe here. We'll throw it in there, and then let's get a crafting card. So what we can do is we can actually have our interface be... Oh, well, it's not going to auto-out-pull, or auto-pull out, is it? That's okay. I can actually have a conduit come out. And technically, since I'm going to have four furnaces, I could have it export to a chest. That would be okay. Not for sure if I want to do that or not. Like export to a chest and the chest pull out to each of the four furnaces it would only use one channel instead of four additional channels I'll tell you what I might actually do that in fact just so I don't waste a whole bunch of channels just doing these furnaces um, so what we do is we'd have like a chest right here let's say so we're gonna have an interface on the top of this furnace now if these furnaces weren't instantaneous I would have a furnace like system kind of like what we had before we had ten furnaces that all kind of cook the same stuff, but I mean these furnaces are fast enough. I'm just gonna have a dedicated furnace for each recipe, kind of a thing. Um, and honestly, if I find that I need more than four furnaces, I can. There's ways I can do that, but I think like nine recipes per furnace will be fine. So we'll have an interface there, and then we're gonna have an export bus onto this chest. Yeah, that'll work. Let me go ahead and remove that. We're going to have item conduits that run out 
like that. We're going to have them insert onto that. It's going to pull out of this. And green channel is fine. Export bus, we're going to configure it and say you keep mini coal. And we're going to give it a crafting card. Um, yep, use or craft. And then I want to just plug up some smart cable. Just like that. And we should start to see mini coal building up. It is. And it'll go into the furnace automatically. Okay. So now what we need to do is pull the items out of the furnace and... Oh, ah, I forgot about that. Scratch that. Let's remove that. And let's use a full-bodied interface. That's the worst thing is you can't plug up conduits into those, those ones. So what we'll do is we'll have an interface above each furnace, an interface they are pointing down kind of a thing. And then what we can do is we can just have item conduits pull out of this furnace and pump into that. Let me remove. Bah. Let me remove that real quick. No. 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 Extract and then insert back into the interface. Okay, and so now if we were to make a recipe here, let's do thickened glass first. I use thickened glass so much and I'm so tired of having to manually make this stuff. So thickened glass is just sandy glass cook or sandy whatever. Sandy glass, yeah. Okay. So we're going to set it to processing pattern. Let me get one of these real quick. So if you cook that, then you're going to get thickened glass. Encode it. And we'll see how this runs, how well this runs. I'd also like to get wireless, like a wireless terminal set up going this episode, but we'll see um, how well that works. I'm sure you guys notice that it's a bit better FPS now without the logistics network. Well, it's going to give me a hiccup whenever I say that. But um, All right, let's go ahead and order, say, 2,000 thickened glass. And let's see what happens. The... I put my conduits in the wrong place, sorry. This coal can come in from the side, right? And then our items will come out of the bottom. Okay. I apologize, guys. I have these pro vanilla skills when it comes to like vanilla furnaces. Never automate them. So then what we'll do is we'll just bring this up on the brown channel. We'll say you can insert on brown. And you can extract always active. There we go. Now it's pulling out the thickened glass. I could use some conduit speed upgrades. Let me get some of those maybe. Um, and we'll throw those into there. Actually, I've got like all this stuff automated. If I just get a redstone torch real quick. Right, so if we gave this full speed, basically it's pulling out as fast as it's being crafted. Um, let's take a look and see how much thickened glass is being generated now. Oh, look at that going up. That's a, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. Honestly, I mean, I do think one furnace cooking thickened glass is plenty. I mean, yeah, I, I'm ordering 2,000, you know. That's going to make <laughs> hundreds of dense cables, so... Um, I think it's beyond the scope of what we actually need. Okay, so anything else that I need smelted, it's not a problem to add that in to the S, and then eventually I'll add additional, like, three furnaces, possibly more if we need them, because really I could add this over and have, like, eight furnaces with this setup, which would be uh, plenty. Um, next up, the sag meals. I think I'm going to leave them kind of in the same setup we have, right? And basically just use one channel that pumps everything into those sag mills. So we are going to lose these diamond chests. We don't really need these anymore. And instead what we're going to do is let's get, um, we've got our interface and I've still got those filters I didn't end up using. Okay, I think I've got everything that we need. Um, I did go ahead and make a recipe here for Fluix Dust. One Fluix Crystal equals one Fluix Dust. Just a processing pattern. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to set our interface down 
we'll put it like right actually you know what we'll put the interface down right there and we'll just plug this up ME cables fine and then that's gonna basically just feed into a chest that sets right here and I know this is on the outside of the wall that's fine because the walls are gonna get redone here very very soon fairly well done anyways and there are actually gonna be some accent detail work over where that chest is at so that's I'm not worried about it being right there um, so this interface is gonna feed into this chest and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have item conduits pull out on green just extracts always active and then those same item conduits are going to push into this interface on brown and then we'll just disable this connection. Now I may end up having this feed dark balls in as well. Um, we'll see. But as for right now, I don't really need them because I don't have anything with a byproduct. So we'll go ahead and throw in our Fluix Dust recipe. And I just ordered a hundred Fluix Dust. I did forget to set Round Robin to enabled. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it's actually going through this stuff fairly quickly. So let me go order like a hundred more Fluix Dust. Because um, it's really not a... I have tons of Fluix. I don't mind ordering an extra hundred. Let's order a thousand and just see what happens. So a thousand Fluix Dust. It goes into the system and check that out. It's bouncing that stuff all over the place. Now I do need speed upgrades, conduit speed upgrades, because it's not pulling out of the chest nearly as fast as it could. Okay, so extract, there you go. And there we go. All these are getting all these are getting things. Haha. <laughs> awesome. So, I mean it's it'll be done with a thousand fluix dust fairly quickly at this rate. And I may end up doing a faster like crushing method, but for right now that works. And then if I want to add additional recipes to this, since they're all plugged up to the same system, what I can do is I can just add interfaces um, around this chest. And if I need to, I can always move the chest over. But um, theoretically, I could have five interfaces feeding into one chest. If I wanted to, I could set up additional chests. Um, you know, I could always have an interface right next to this interface that's connected to another chest that pulls out. Um, there's a lot of ways that this could be expanded. So it's not really any kind of a concern at all. And, the, and stuff gets sag milled very, very quickly. So next up we have these induction smelters and the slice and splice. Okay. All right, so I'm going to make just a couple recipes here for like an axe and shears real quick. Um, actually, I guess I could do like a dark axe. So dark axe, dark shears. I'm also going to want a crafting card. There's that. And then we're going to want a recipe let's start with like the zombie electrode or, yeah is it zombie here we go zombie electrode um this takes a zombie head basic pastor i don't have any zombie heads oh my god um we will be by the way we will i'm gonna i'm gonna wait on that then um what other kinds of things would i want to make in the slice and splice um in the probably in the next episode we're going to automate zombie heads. <sighs> I promise. So we'll just have an interface here on the back. Actually, we should just be able to do a flat interface. Because I don't have to have any item conduits or anything like that. So we'll just do a, a flat ME interface. And we're going to say that you can push and pull from that direction. And then in here we're going to put... Uh, a crafting card, we're going to say keep one dark shear, and I'm going to need a dark axe real quick. And we'll say keep one dark axe in here, and there we go. And then we just have to plug this up. Um, I guess we'll plug it up to this line, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just do it to this ME line, that's fine. So we'll just have this kind of come up and go along. Let me get some more ME conduit. Um, I think, honestly, I think eight channels through there is going to be plenty. 
because I think we'll probably use these a bit, because the nice thing is ME Conduit can go into the same block space as the rest of the, you know, Ender I.O. conduits. Oh, it cannot plug into an ME interface. That's actually fine, because we have Smart Cable here that can come out. Okay, and then what do we want to make with this? Isn't there, is there, there we go, recipe slot. Is there anything that doesn't take a zombie head, just so I can show you, for example, Tormented Enderman Head or Ender Resonator? Well, the Ender Resonator we actually use for a bit, and we're going to need that for our wireless stuff anyways. So let's teach it how to make that. Um, if you send one Enderman Head and two Solarium, two Silicon, and one Vibrant Alloy. This is Processing, two Solarium, two Silicon, and a Vibrant alloy that's going to get you a I don't have any ender resonators whoops there we go and it should be in our ME system right now because we have that interface already plugged up and the uh, thing is pushing and pulling which push and pull does work if you recall it didn't work with the logistics pipes it does work with uh, AE2 so that's actually very very nice so that gets you an Ender Resonator. If we throw this in here, we should be able to order our Ender Resonators now. So slice and splice. And honestly, one slice and splice is plenty because there's only like four recipes or something like that that's actually going to be using that, I believe. Unless there's some kind of modded in recipes that I haven't noticed or something. So if we order an Ender Resonator, we give it just a second. There we go. So we've got Ender Resonators automated now. What else do we have over here? We've got these induction smelters, right? So I'll tell you what we'll do. For these, honestly I can do these a lot easier since we're not using logistics pipes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Uh, I guess I'll leave these. Oh, you know what? We can actually automate solar panels now. Like fully automated solar panels is going to be great. Let me actually make up some recipes here. I know we're getting sidetracked and I'm just all over the place right now, but, you know, jumping into IE, that kind of comes with it, I think, so. Basically, there's a lot of stuff that I want to do right now, but I'm trying to, like, cram as much as I can into each episode, because a lot of this stuff is, you know, stuff that I'd like to do on camera with you guys. Okay, so now we should be good to actually automate our solar panel tier 1. That's probably the worst one, in my opinion. And then we'll go ahead and grab one of those. And then if you take solar panel tier 1s, you combine them with all this. Now we are going to have to get the chipsets automated. We're going to do that in just a minute. Um, machine bases, we'll go ahead and teach it. Do I not have rock wool? That's right, I've got to teach it how to make that. So it's smelt slag, right? We're steadily getting somewhere. Promise. Because I'd like to get... I'd like to have really high tier solar panels automated um, after we get all this stuff kind of sorted. So, there's how you get machine bases, our solar panel tier 2s, there's that. I know chipsets aren't fully automated yet, but that's okay. And then solar panel tier 3s. Okay, now here, we're going to need solar panel tier 2s, and we're going to need photovoltaic cells. These are the mirrors and the lappies together. One and one gets us, uh, gets us those. So let's teach it that. That's kind of what I was wanting to get to right now, so that we actually had a need for the induction smelters to be automated. So, lapis and a mirror. Um, I'm actually going to need these on me, aren't I? And let's go set this up in our first induction smelter. I'll probably leave both of them plugged up, I think. And there's our photovoltaic cell. Because what I plan on doing is I plan on actually getting rid of this thing. You know, right now it's automatically creating um, the energizer capsules. But what I'm going to do... Yeah, that's totally ran out, but... <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this whole setup. I'm just going to have it in the AE system, and we're just going to keep, you know, maybe like a stack or something always crafted at all times. Because it really doesn't take very long for it to craft, for our system to craft that stuff. So I'm not too concerned with that. But there's how you get a photovoltaic cell. And then if we wanted to get the tier twos, those take one tier one. And it takes 16 clay. So let's go ahead and teach it that recipe so that that's at least done right now. 
and then let's plug up one of our induction smelters and see how this how this does. Um, I will say it would be a little bit quicker to have an induction smelter for each photovoltaic cell, but honestly, I mean, this stuff is stuff that I'm just going to come up, order a bunch, and then go do something else, right? So I'm not too concerned about that. Now this, I will want to use a full-faced interface, a full-size interface, um, because I'm going to want item conduits to pump back into this. But we're going to say you're going to input from the back, you're going to output out the top, and then we're just going to run some item conduits along like that. We'll say extract always active, insert. These are resonant. I will want to add some speed upgrades to this, but that's fine. Okay, so now if I ordered photovoltaic cells, um, let's order, oh wait, I didn't put the uh, the recipes into the induction smelter, that's fine. Throw those in there, and so now, let's order ourselves like, um, let's actually do photovoltaic cells two, because that's going to take both of them, right? So we're going to do, say, send us a hundred photovoltaic cells, number two. And we should say this should be crafting. Yeah. It's crafting right now. Let's pop over there and we'll see it actually running. Which is always fun. There we go. That's working. So this other induction smelter, I don't actually need it right now. I'm going to pull it up for the time being. And then if we need it, it'll be in the system and we'll just grab it. Right. So that's running. I still need to get plates set up as well. Um, now this... What I can do is, I can actually pull those hoppers off. So let's just get ourselves some smart cable, run this back over to here. And then we'll just put interfaces, I don't know, the interfaces may actually be able to just sit right here, I'm not for sure. I actually never tried that, we're going to try that real quick. So we're going to rotate this, say that you face forward, you face forward and then what we'll do is along the bottom here let me actually get down here we'll just bring some item conduits and the nice thing with it being applied energistics is they don't actually have to plug into the interface that made them for it to realize for the system to realize that the item was crafted um, okay I'll just pump it uh, I guess I could use ME cable right there but I'll just pump it up like this that's fine we'll say you can insert and then let's try making a recipe real quick if not we can use conduits to pump the items onto the conveyor belts but I think this should work honestly so we're gonna say that if you take say iron ingots then you're going to get one iron plate we'll just encode that and I believe this left one was the uh, the plates so let me go order like I don't know a hundred iron plates for example we've actually got a bunch made up but uh, we'll just get a hundred of those yep it works awesome or at least it's crafting them let's make sure that they're actually going into the system they should be we should have iron plates being made and dumped into here 147 148 okay so that's working awesome so that is done um, now I will say that we still need to get the pneumaticraft stuff automated um, but I mean this whole room is done and we still need to get the item input down here done but right now I mean the loot bags and stuff are just building up in the AE network that's not a problem um, you know I don't I don't mind it anyways right this second um, this stuff I mean I'll get all this stuff sorted you know just it takes time this stuff is all going to get torn out right this whole section so really this room there's not a whole lot that needs to be done because there's things that I think take priority over this room so that's what I'm trying to focus on today is getting that stuff done now the next thing I know we need to automate pneumatic craft but the next thing I want to do is I want to get lasers automated because I need golden chipsets and stuff like that I need those um, like right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just pull up all of our lasers and I'll come through and get all these energy conduits up in just a bit. Um, let's go ahead and grab this assembly table. And this assembly table as well. I will say that logistics pipes made a just a huge mess of things. Like there's pulsating chipsets. I mean, there's items just all over the place, like just loose items. Um, 
And we're going to pull up this assembly table. Okay, so I want to go ahead and get a quantum link chamber. Let's see if our singularity is done. Our first one is. Let's see, let's get ourselves like tiny TNT. Because this stuff doesn't actually blow up blocks. And we'll need a redstone torch. And then let's get a, what is it, ender pearl dust, right? We'll just set it off right here. That'll be fine. So we'll go ahead and put down our tiny TNT. We're going to throw down our ender dust and our singularity. And then we'll just set this off. Okay, now they're like right on top of it. So we'll try that. There we go. Quantum Entangled Singularities. I think they just weren't in the explosion radius is I think what it was. Because Tiny TNT is only like a 2x2 two two little blast radius. It's not very big. Um, but anyways, we got our Quantum Entangled Singularities. Now these two, of course, are forever linked. So I am going to rename them. Um, I am going to need some XP levels, right? Five levels. Hello. Okay, let me go get uh, ten levels. Because basically these singularities are together forever and you do want to keep up with them and make sure that uh, you don't get those mixed up or anything like that so we'll say moon AE and then we'll call this one the same thing we're gonna call it moon AE just so that we know that these two there we go moon AE so that we know that those two are forever linked you know it's the moon applied energistic system basically and then let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and teach it recipes for the quantum um, link stuff so we're gonna say there's how to get uh, quantum link chambers and there's how to get quantum rings oh yeah I'm gonna need to teach it energy cells we'll grab one of those then we're gonna teach it um, the quantum ring and oh it actually completed the energy cell so it looks like crafting stuff in applied energistics works I think whereas the logistics system did not work so that's awesome if, it, if that's the case because that's gonna make our lives so much easier we got a greater reward bag with a basic bin in it okay I'm so excited and they actually have a quest here. They want us to get the dense energy cell. That's just eight energy cells and calculation processor. Let's go ahead and get that. Um, just because we can. And I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and automate it too. Just because I've been automating like everything. There's our dense energy cell. And that should complete the quest. It does. Awesome. That's going to make, oh, it's epic reward bag too. With two diamond apples in it. Okay. So anyways, on to what we were working on. Let's get ourselves um, quantum link chambers. We're going to want two of these. And then we're going to want uh, 16 quantum link rings. That's why I automate these. Because we're actually going to be setting up a fair few of these. And I just want to have it easier on us. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have our quantum links. I'm going to put the first one down. Let's see. Where would be the nearest power line? I think it's like directly beneath us. Yeah. Like, there's a power line. So the first quantum link, I'm going to put it at, like, I think right here. Let me get a little bit of cobblestone so I can kind of plan this out real quick. So if we had, like, a quantum ring, like, here, here, okay, and then we'd have one right here. That'll work perfect. So we're basically just going to put rings around it, and then we're going to put a chamber in the middle. There we go, and then we can just take our singularity, throw it into there, and now we need to give this thing power and channels, okay? Um, I guess we're going to pull the channels down from the top. I may actually bring this up a little bit more, we'll see. Maybe have it like on a platform. I'm not 100% I'm not sure right this second, so we shall see. Um, okay, so we've got a dense line right here. And basically, I just need to bring it to the edge, um, I think. Or we may be able to use the dense line that runs along the back side. That actually might be better. So if we remove that. Okay, so let's, we've got our P2P. 
And then I guess for cable colors coming out of this, I think we're just going to use, um, honestly, I might use black because we're using black on the bottom right now and I've got a lot of the cables. So yeah, let's just go with uh, like a dense black cable. I'll just order one because it's going to craft eight. That'll be fine for right now. I'll probably take a little bit more with me to the moon, but okay. So we'll just plug that up. We'll do our P to P and then we're going to snag it with a memory card. There we go. And then just plug it up with our Fluix uh, smart cable. And then I guess moment of truth here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually let me remove that. I'm going to do... No, let me leave that. I'm going to actually put these on a platform. That way they don't have any cables coming down. That's quite so visible. I'm using slabs up there, so they're still going to be slightly visible, but um, it'll be a lot easier to hide that. Because what I'll probably do is just around these, I'll actually do like an accent block, and it'll be a full block with the slabs kind of sticking through. Or, you know, not not being slabs is what I'm trying to say. Not being slabs right there. Okay, so we'll have a piece of smart fluix come out of there. We'll have a, not an interface, a P2P right there. We'll go ahead and give it those settings. So we'll just plug our dense block straight into the quantum ring. Because basically it's just going to send those channels through the quantum ring, right? And then let me grab... We're going to throw our Moon AE Singularity into that one. It doesn't matter which goes in what. They're the same thing. They just only connect to each other. So so that's all set up now. Now I just need to go to the Moon and actually do it on that side, right? Yeah, we should be good. So let's go ahead and pop on over to the Moon. We're just going to get our Quantum Link stuff set up right now. And right now this area is actually not sealed. Um... What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have glass. Um, I'm going to have glass here, and then I'm going to have an assembly table that sits right here. I'll go ahead and put that down. And basically, this assembly table, you can use it for manual stuff, and then you can see the ones back here that are automated, is what I'm thinking. Um, so what we'll do is we will have a diamond chest that just sits, like, right here. We'll have another assembly table, like, right here, I think. So both of these feed into the same diamond chest because it's just going to basically just output all the items from one diamond chest because as long as the stuff goes where it, where it's going, that's what counts. And this one's going to be stuff that just plugs into the drawers. So things that we're going to have just a drawer filled with those things. And then what I'm thinking is we're just going to have lasers. I built this room because the maximum so uh, distance that lasers can be from the assembly table is like four blocks between the two. So I'm thinking if we have... It like this now granted if I put like lasers here and then put another thing of lasers right in front of that and so on I mean I could make it run faster but it wouldn't look good so I wanted this to at least you know look look good <laughs> this is of course a, uh, a large selling point for me so that's what we're doing and this should be now I will say this one not all the lasers back here are gonna hit that but all the lasers will hit this one so um, which is fine. I mean, it's it's still, it's plenty of lasers. We're not going to need more, really. Um, but what we're going to do is just start putting lasers down, you know, throughout the room, kind of random, just so it makes sure and hits the assembly tables. Now, the sides and the tops and stuff like that are probably the best place um, for these to go. This back wall, I started putting some there, but it's like, they're not going to hit this one, so I can't, can't put all my eggs in one basket in that case. But, like, my end goal here is to just have it so that stuff is just being created at such a rapid rate. Um, and we'll probably even keep, like, a stack of all the different machine frames on hand and stuff like that, just so it's there. Um, maybe even a drawer, I don't know. Not for sure, I haven't really given it any thought. We might just have a whole drawer of that stuff. Because, honestly, the only machine frame that's really expensive at the moment is the resonant one and that's because it requires a zombie head but once we have zombie heads this is not an expensive recipe at all I do need to get these gears set up and stuff but I'll I'll do that I don't think anything else other than the gears that we're gonna need those are just crafted right yeah but I don't think anything else really poses a problem to us I just need to get signal gears and gears 
energetic and vibrant gears, stuff like that, automated. Um, now, these aren't actually plugged up to the Tesseract. I believe the Tesseract's actually over here. So let me go get some Ender Conduits, and we'll get that plugged up. And then we'll get our Quantum Ring plugged up, and it it's actually going to need an Energy Acceptor, though, right? At least to kickstart it. I need to get the elevators and stuff sorted, but I'm, I'm, I can actually build in this base now, um, which makes me happy because before I could not, I mean, the lag was just awful there for a while, but now, I mean, it's not too bad through here, so I could actually, can actually get to where I'm, I'm building and stuff through here a bit more. Um, now, I think our quantum link, I think I'm actually going to put it right here. I think it would look good, personally. Um, oh, yeah, that's where our chunk loader is. That's fine. I can move the chunk loader. That's not a problem. Chunk loader will go there. That should still be the same exact thing. And then I need to get over to our energy line. Now, I believe we've got an energy cable line that runs right under here. It is, but it's heavy aluminum. Can't use that. Heavy aluminum's dinky. So, no thanks. So we'll just bring an energy cable line out from the Tesseract, bring it down through here, and just dig in this direction until we hit the conduits. And the nice thing is I don't really have to worry about hiding the wall at all, because it's all going to be hidden by lasers. Basically, you're just going to have laser bases. Um, now, if you recall, there was actually, there used to be a laser plus, but I guess it's been removed or something? I, s I seem to remember a laser plus in the past, but it is not a thing on here, so. Um, but we're going to have our energy conduit come over to right there, and then we're just going to do our energy acceptor right here, and then our quantum link stuff can go right here. Now, really, I mean, I could get by without needing a quantum link by just shipping our uh, stuff to and from overworld but I want to have terminals and things like that in all the uh, on all the space stations and stuff so there's our quantum link and I'll tell you what we're actually gonna do the energy acceptor and just plug it into the dense cable so that's connected and we'll throw in our moon AE connection and so that should have channels now I'll tell you what just to test it let me pop back over and let me get a terminal I don't have any more terminals crafted yet, but I'll just grab one of the ones that we have and I'll bring it over for the time being. Be nice to have access to our AE system over there anyways, so. While we're working on this laser setup and all of that good stuff. And the best thing is I can move between like space stations and the overworld without any kind of issue at all now. So. Alright, so for example, if I plugged up this crafting terminal here. There we go. We have access to all of our items. And let me go ahead and say number of items. There we go. It's it's gathering information, I think, right now and saying, okay, here's all your essences and all that stuff. But yeah, we have access to everything in the storage system now. We're going to go ahead and... That's already said. Okay. And... Um, there should be, I know it's not going to show up on this cable because it's not coming through here, but if we if we go through there, we should have one of 32 devices plugged up to this cable line now. Okay, I was actually thinking of how I wanted to do this because, you know, originally I was thinking about keeping drawers filled, but I think we're just going to keep a stack of all the chipsets. I think that would be fine because it should, honestly, once this new laser room is built out, it should be big enough that... Um, you know, there should be enough lasers going and stuff that it's not going to be a concern. You know, if we if we need more than 64 or something, it should create it fast enough that it won't be any kind of problem. So I'm just going to make a quick recipe here and say that if you take gold and redstone, then you're going to get a golden chipset. Um, I'm going to get encode that. I'm going to do the rest of the chipsets later. I'll do that off camera. You guys know how to make patterns. I try not to make too many of those on camera <laughs> because... I feel like it's redundant. And that's like I need to craft more ultimate furnaces. I did realize that our alloy smelters aren't plugged up, but uh, we'll plug those up probably next episode. I'm not in any rush because there's only a few things that we really need alloy smelters for since we're, you know, our dark steel and things like that are being created. 
you know, already. Now, I'm not for sure. One thing I want to check is we may not even need this diamond chest, now that I think about it, because I think these can feed right into an interface, if I recall correctly. So if so, we can put our interface down, like right here, and then maybe have like another interface right here, um, and then probably, well, actually you can't put the assembly tables next to each other because they'll try to feed into them, uh, each other. I do recall that being a, an issue that I've ran into in the past. But let's, um, whoops, I, I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. And we'll just plug these up, just bam. And they're, they'll probably end up being another table right there, maybe. We'll see. Um, and then I guess this, I need to get it past the laser. So I guess we're going to just go under the floor with it. And then we'll just bring our dense cable line um, to about right here, I think. And then we'll have our smart cable run this way. Oops. Just like that. Okay, so those should be plugged up now. And then what we're going to do is we'll just put recipes. What I think we're going to do is this front one, since it's not going to have the lasers on the back side, it's not going to have access to all the lasers, we're going to do the chipsets on the front one and then the machine frames on the back one. Okay, the things that take a lot of energy will go back there, I think. Um, and then the front one, this one here will may end up using it for something, but I'm thinking the manual craft one will be for things like, uh, well, we may not even use the uh, build craft facades or anything. I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, I'm sure there's stuff that we'll want to have manual access to that. So we'll just put our golden chipset recipe into here. And now if I come over here and I ordered golden chipsets, let's order a hundred of those. And let's see what happens. There they are. There's all the gold and the redstone. We'll go ahead and select the golden chip set so it's craftable. Um, all of our lasers are kicking on. Moment of truth. It seems to have fed back down into it. Actually, I can't remember how many golden chip sets we have. Let me take a look. We have 30. I believe we had 29 before, so I think that's right. Okay, yeah, the golden chip sets are going into there. That's awesome. And basically what I'm going to do here on the moon is I'm going to use the moon... Aside from just lasers, this is smart cable. I should probably bring it on the dense line back a bit more than what I've got it. So let me break this stuff off. Because the moon's not really like a large base that needs like a whole lot of terminals and stuff like that. I mean, it's mainly just going to be lasers. And then we're also going to use it for keeping things stocked. Now, eventually we may end up having to um, add on stuff that we want to keep stocked elsewhere as well. But I don't know. I think, I think this will be enough, honestly. But what we're going to do is we are going to have... Let me bring the, uh, the smart cable line over to, like, right here. We'll bring it up. And then we're going to have um, a storage bus on each side of this. And then it'll also come with the wall, right? There'll be um, six setups over here and then six over there. Well, there'll be... Okay, there'll be four setups on each side, I think. Because that'll be eight channels. So I think that's what we'll do. And then we'll have interfaces like that. But we're going to put crafting cards into these interfaces. And we're going to say keep a stack of golden chip sets in stock. So what we're going to do is our smart cable. We're just going to have it come back and then come up like that. So there's two golden chip sets. We'll go ahead and throw those in there. So there's 41. And now if we come over here, 41 golden chip sets. So let's make a quick recipe so I can show you that in action. And I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and just automate a few of these so that the recipes are done. So give me just a second here. The redstone chip set, the iron chip set, diamond, like pretty much all of these. I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to make those. Okay, so there's the last one of those. That's now all the recipes, as you can see, all the different chipsets and all that stuff. Now, I still have to do the machine frames. They're really no different. The only one that's a pain at the moment to do is the, like I said, the resonant because it requires a zombie head. We may actually, next episode, try to get that automated. I 
don't know. My current plan is like, you know, this episode we're about wrapping up point sadly. Next episode we're gonna finish up the input room, automate the pneumatic craft stuff and whatnot. I, st I need to get the rest of these lasers done too at some point. Um, but let's go ahead and tell this to keep a stack of all these items on hand. You know, I'm kind of debating between possibly even making a planet base that's nothing but storage. Like deep storage and just storage drawers and all that to have it all centralized. But I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we shall we shall see. So anyways, all of our chipsets are in here. We have a stack of everything. Crystallized redstone and all eight chipsets. And so then all we have to do is just throw these recipes into here. Now, keep in mind the redstone chipset that just requires redstone, that one needs to be separate. Okay? So we'll go ahead and throw all of these in there. And then the redstone chipset will throw into this one. And so what it's going to do, you'll notice it sent some emeralds over here because it needs emerald chipsets. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and select that one. And is that the only one that it needs is emerald chipsets? No, it should need redstone comp chipsets. Diamond chipsets. Oh, it's probably out of crafting CPUs, I bet is why <clears throat> it's not sending any more right now. But I'm going to go ahead and throw some things in here like diamonds. Tell it that it's okay, it can make diamonds. Uh, comp chipsets. Um, pulsating chipsets. That's what, five. Then it just needs iron, quartz, and the crystallized redstone. Okay, so now it knows that it can make all of these different chipsets. And the reason it sent those emeralds over is because it's saying, you know, hey, I need emerald chipsets. So once, like, say once the golden chipsets are done, for example, which that's going to take a little while because I've got so many crafting, um, but it will be able to automatically create those and keep a stack of everything on hand. Let me go ahead and get, like, oh, no crafting CPUs are available. Awesome. Tell you what, I'm just going to manually craft it then. How many can I make? A stack. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and help speed this up just a little bit. Okay. There, there we go. We got some on the top and everything. Let's see. It's crafting golden. I mean, that's that's a whole lot faster right now, right? That is a lot faster. Okay, it's making emerald at the moment. But, um, so it should go through and craft as is needed. Um, I am going to go ahead and bump the range on this up by like one more because I think I added an extra chunk on there that I didn't um, put enough stuff there for. How many lasers? Okay, I can get another stack and five. That's pretty much all my rubies, which isn't, isn't good. I never automated rubies. I've just been mining them when I see them in the nether because it's really, there's only a few things that we need those four really and we weren't using them for a, a pretty long time um, but we never automated like nether saving which is isn't really a problem because we're going to have um, the ore center like the mining center set up very very soon so it's not a major problem there we go there's a few more lasers let's see how fast it's running now it is making an emerald chipset I mean, it's probably eating a, a monster amount of power. Right now, we're feeding it um, 7,760 RF per tick at the moment. But look at that golden chipset speed. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, I mean, before long, I mean, we're going to have stacks of all these things, and whenever it needs more, it can just kick on, make some more, and it should run all the time. But I'll tell you what, I know it's about wrapping up point. So, um, I think we're going to end it here, and I'm going to let those comparators build up and stuff. Next episode, um, our plan is, I want to finish getting everything plugged up for AE2. And then, of course, after that point, we can expand on it. It's no problem to expand on it. It's just this initial change was, like, the big burst of stuff that we had to do. Um, but as it stands right now, this building's all plugged up. All back in there is basically just the energy system's all plugged up. This whole section's plugged up. Um, the only thing over here that we need to plug up is the alloy smelter, which literally takes like two minutes tops. In here, uh, basically I need to, we've got to change over this section here, and we'll tear down, probably tear down this section, I think. 
But yeah, so we'll get all that plugged up. It shouldn't take very long. And then um, we just need to plug up our pneumatics room is the only other main thing. Oh, and these other two like little fluid setups, the lava and the plastic. We'll probably plug those up real quick. No, the lava system's plugged up. So yeah, just the plastic. And then, of course, we'll have to plug this up. Uh, the pneumatics craft crafting. Pneumatic craft. And then um, a couple other little things like salt and stuff. We'll get into a little bit of fluid crafting next episode. And then, um, assuming we have time, we'll probably jump over into mechanism and uh, get into quantum flux so that we can finish out our ore quintupling system. Because I'm trying to get as much into these episodes as I can so we can get everything converted and get on. Um, now, I will say, after next episode, we should be done converting over to AE um, and possibly a little ways into some other pro uh, projects. The upcoming episodes, just a heads up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up... Um, Probably the next project that we're going to do is our ore system. We're going to get ore quintupling in place or mining in place. I believe we can start this because the laser drill just requires plastic, lights, octatic capacitors, hardened aluminum. The pre-chargers just require the pink slime crystal. So we're probably going to get that set up um, here very, very soon. Um, also, solar panels. We're going to get some higher tier solar panels because right now we're running, I think it's like tier 6. Yeah. Tier 6 is... Um, these produce 8,180, but now that we have AE2 crafting, we'll have to set up a fluid transposer. That's not really an issue at all. And then, um, we'll get our photovoltaic sales. We may actually do that next episode, work on these, uh, and really push these up. Um, maybe go for like solar panel 10s next episode. Now, the solar panel 11, we're going to have to wait because we need the Infinity Star, which is Neutronium Compressor. But the rest of that's not bad. And then solar panel 12 is Chaos Catalysts, which are expensive. We're not ready for those just yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, we may go for solar panel 10s next episode. And that'll help really bump up our power. And I won't mind um, ordering a bunch of those to be crafted, you know, once we get all that up and going because um, it's something that... Our AE system can handle it, you know. Um, I may need to make some larger CPUs, but I'm going to work on those between the episode because we need more CPUs right now because we're starting to have things that are kept on hand and stuff like that. And CPUs are definitely something that we're going to want to push uh, pretty heavily within this pack. We may even have more CP CPUs than what I have planned for right here because um, I can always tuck them away and kind of hide them back and stuff. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, so ore processing and mining coming up um, and then we're going to work on the oxygen system so that we can easily expand on our space bases um, we're going to work on the mob grinding center on like a planet um, I do want that in place um, though I will say that's going to have to wait a little bit longer because we're going to need to do a little bit more space before we can effectively get into what I want to do for that so we will be doing a bit of space in the next few episodes uh, before long, we're probably going to get into a bit of dire crafting, and we are going to unlock uh, Project E. So I know some of you guys have expressed interest in that. That is coming. It just takes a little while to get up to that. So once AE2 gets done and our ore processing and stuff, we'll be ready to really start pushing the pack again, you know, um, because I want to get this stuff squared away because there's just so much. If we keep exploring space at the rate we were going, you know, there was so much that was getting unlocked and we weren't having time to really get into all of it and automate it. Of course, a lot of that was because I was going for AE2. You know, I wanted to, to go ahead and push on through there because um, we were at the point I couldn't really automate anymore um, as it stood with uh, the logistics pipes just because it wasn't working. So, um, but yeah. So anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always... Be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already for more daily videos. Um, and I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys next time.